the interesting thing about the 72 Melakarta system is there are many interesting things about it, but one of them is that uh, this, for instance, this combination. This is not, this would not have been possible except for this, uh, this schema. It is not to say that we didn't have ragas which had such swaras. There were ragas like uh, Nata was one. Even today we have This is actually These are the swaras of Nata. Though traditionally uh, more uh, musicians of an earlier generation would never sing this is what we call avoiding the vivadi dosha because there is a discordance when we say on this uh, using notes that are very very close so ri sari ga Gama gama riga. These are very very close, closely placed together. As I mentioned in uh, one of my earlier sessions, this is not pleasant, it is discordant, it is dissonant. And uh, musicians of an earlier generation were very careful to avoid what is called the Vivadi dosha. So, what is Vivadi? So, we saw that Venkat Makin came up with a schema of 72 Melakatas and this he did by actually giving, creating 16 names for the 12 Swarasthanas. Though there are 12 Swarasthanas, 4 of these Swarasthanas uh, had dual names. I mean, it could, they could be either a, a variety of Ri or a variety of Ga or they could be a variety of Dha or Ni. That is how uh, he did it. To look at the schema again, this, the third Swarasthana could be either Chaturshruti Rishabha or Shuddha Gandhara. The fourth Swarasthana could be either Shatshruti Rishabham or Sadharna Gandharam. Again, the tenth Swarasthana could be either Chaturshruti Dhaivata or Shuddha Nishada. The eleventh Swarasthana could either be Shatshruti Dhaivata or Kaishiki Nishada. So, how do we decide? Suppose we have the third Swarasthana in a Raga. Then how do we decide whether it is going to be Re2 or G2? Uh, the, the third Swarasthana is mm, uh, this is the third swarasthana. So is this Ri or is it Ga? How do we know? How can we decide that? There is a very clear rule for this. It is only when the second swarasthana is also there that the third swarasthana will be called G. Otherwise, primarily the third swarasthana is Ri, Ri2. This is the primary. Uh, name for the second swarasthana, the, the, the third swarasthana. But when we also have re one in a raga, so when we have the second swarasthana and the third swarasthana in a certain raga, then the second swarasthana will be re one, third swarasthana will be g one. It can't be re two. You, you don't want to have two re's in the same raga. You want to have the seven swaras. So. You won't say that. These are the three swarasthanas. One, two, three. So it will be gari. Ganamute. 
composition in a raga which uses the third and the second swarasthanas and we say sari ga ri sa sari sa da sari ga ri sa navanita chora ಸತ್ಕಿಶೋರ ನವನೀತ ಚೋರ ನಂದ ಸತ್ಕಿಶೋರ ನರಮೀತ್ರ ಧೀರ ನರಸಿಂಹ ಶೂರ ನವ ಮೇಘತೇಜ raga which is called gana murthi you have sari ga and a uh, now suppose this per not there in the raga which has only the third swarasthana and then some others for instance mm, sari ga now here sari ga these are the swarasthanas we would never say sa ga ga no sari ga because only in ragas or mela mela karta in which this this swara this swarasthana occurs and this swarasthana occurs that we have we call this a variety of g to get a sense of vivadi ragas let us now listen to a rendition of a composition of tyagaraja atukara dani balkani this is in a vivadi raga called manoranjani manoranjani is a janya of the fifth melakarta manavati Now Mahanavati has a structure like this Sarigama Adha Sarigama Adha Now Manoranjani is a janya of this rag, of this mela It does not take Ga In the 
आरोह सरी मदनी सनी रागमगरी सटुका हरा हटुका धनी बगनी हटुका So in this way, this raga is structured, and the, uh, because it takes the same notes as Manavati, except that the aroha drops the ga. Therefore, Manoranjani is a jani of Manavati. Let us listen to this rendition. अटुकारादनी बलगनी अटुकारादनी बलगनी अटुकारादनी बलगनी अटुकारादनी बलगनी अटुकारादनी बलगनी अभिमानम् लेकबो Oh, you're not too kind. 